Ladies and gents, welcome to the gray state and this evolutionary update of my plate carrier setups here. First and foremost, you guys might be saying, hey, wait a minute, didn't you just do one of these like five months ago? Yeah, I absolutely did, but there's three key reasons why I'm going back and redoing one right now. So first and foremost, I've changed a lot of the internals and I never really covered what I was using at the agency that I worked at prior to my current gig. And I think there's some value in it. I wanna show you guys some of the considerations in your setup and your loadout and stuff like that. For those of you who might be um, paramedics or EMTs out there and you're looking for some level of threat prote protection, because obviously, you know, the landscape has changed quite a bit. We've got a lot more dynamic scenarios. We do have asymmetric environments. We've got crazy stuff going on. So I think a lot of people are starting to think about how do I protect myself in those environments? So I wanna go back and do a little bit more depth on those two different types, what your considerations are and what you might think about how they work and things like that. Uh, secondly, um, coronavirus, COVID-19, has changed the way we think about things, obviously. So we're here in the middle of September. I originally did a video back at the beginning of the whole thing and didn't really have a whole lot of thought process around it. And now that we're into it, we're getting into the fall, into the winter, we're gonna be thinking about new viruses potentially. And I've changed my loadout specifically and how I think about that and how I'm ready to actually um, throw stuff on very quickly if I need to for my own personal protection. Um, and then finally, um, just in transparency with the, as I started started doing a little bit more of the tactical side of stuff on the tactical emergency medicine, I got reached out to by a company that makes a lot of really cool stuff. So I prided myself on saying this is the practical side of tactical and I was just using an off the shelf carrier with, you know, some just rolled ceramic plates and stuff like that. Well, I've done some considerable upgrading and this company saw it and they said, hey, would you be willing to try this new tactical paramedic loadout that we're building? And we'll send you a kit if you're willing to evaluate it and then put on your channel and stuff. So that's gonna be coming down the pipe here in a little bit, but I wanted to kind of do a snapshot, have a chronological logging of where we're at in this evolutionary process and kind of go from there. So that's really it. So I also recognize that there might be a lot of people who don't know me from Adam, who've never seen my channel and stuff like that. And they're like, who is this guy? So I'm just a working tactical paramedic. I am tactically certified, nationally registered, state licensed paramedic. So what's that mean? Well, here in the state of Indiana, we operate under a doctor's license. Um, so we can do advanced airway, invasive procedures. I can do um, advanced medical, um, it, like medication administration. I can do cardiology. I work for a government agency now that is very progressive and we have broad standing orders and we can do a lot of really cool stuff that a lot of other um, agencies can't. That being said, I did work in an inner city high performance environment. So a lot of different things. I have some experiences along the way that I can share. So that's it about me. I don't want to talk about me too much, but if you want to see the daily going ons and stuff like that and just the updates, you can follow me at Instagram at Gray State Medic. I'll put it here on the screen. And then also just uh, hit the bell to subscribe and get notified on this channel here and you'll see that kind of stuff as it comes along. So that's it. So let's talk about the gear. So first and foremost, what I want to do is I want to stay away from the um, super cool dude stuff and just go to the cool dude stuff over here. Um, but this is actually from Blower. It's an external carrier. And a lot of agencies, they don't like the whole molly setup they think it looks a little intimidating they don't want medics looking that way so they um you might have to go with something maybe like a safe life defense uh safe life defense vents vest where it's not all mollied out and all of that kind of stuff is not as tactical but you still want some level of threat protection and something like this goes a really good way um this is actually an external carrier believe it or not and what i mean by that is what you would have is a like a level three soft insert that maybe has stab and puncture resistance you would wear this over like a class a uniform it doesn't have a lot of storage capabilities. You still have to run a duty belt with all your stuff, maybe your radios and your multi-tools, your trauma shears, all that kind of, your glove pockets, all that kind of stuff. It might have, you know, maybe if you have right in the rain, some pens, it'll give you, afford you the opportunity. Basically think of it as a carrier that goes over your shirt that looks like your shirt so that people don't know that you're necessarily wearing ballistic. Uh, protection or stab protection. So that's what this one is. Um, this one was actually built for me when I was working for this agency by a company called uh, Point Blank Enterprises. And you might not be aware of them because they're not, they don't have social media campaigns. They're not like a Safe Life or a Spartan Armor Systems or an AR500 or anything like that. You, you have to go through a department agency, through a procurement, get fitted and all that kind of stuff. They are the provider to a lot of top tier or tier one um, operational units in the military. They also create the armor for CIA, FBI, SWAT, uh, US Marshals, a bunch of top end agencies and um, SWAT teams and stuff like that. So I was lucky enough, I was went through that whole process. It took me a while to get the stuff like over a year, but it's actually custom fit for me. And you'll see here what some of the capabilities of the stuff are. That being said, it ain't cheap, all right? so. 
Um, this is my external carrier. Obviously, white was not a super good idea when you think about emergency medical pre-hospital um, for a lot of different reasons. It's just really hard to keep clean and that kind of stuff. So I'm glad I don't have to wear this one anymore. That being said, in addition to the soft armor on the inside, going back to Point Blank Enterprises, they also have their speed plates, which are the hard stuff that I supplemented the soft armor with on this. And this is incredibly thin. You guys can see here it's under half of an inch. It's actually like 0.34 inches thick. It's polyethylene. It's multi-hit rated. It's a super light composite and uh, it weighs less than a half of a pound per plate. I had one in the front, one in the back, shooters cut, curved. And um, as you can imagine, these were basically the threat, the standalone threat rating on this plate itself is what you would expect for those agencies that I was talking about in their service weapons if they were to be turned against them. So we're talking like 5.7 here. So we're thinking P90s, Secret Service. I've got 357 SIG, which is US Marshals. We've got 9mm FBI. I've got seven, uh, 762 by 25, 30 caliber carbine for all those crazy people running around with uh, M1 carbines hitting people. Um, and then when you use it in conjunction with other soft armor, it's also rifle rated and it can take up to a one inch slug from a 12 gauge. So really cool stuff, um, not cheap though, all right? So I'm running this in a different system or a different setup that I have as an alternate in my truck right now. So this is the initial one. All right, so that covers off on the external carrier like in a class A uniform. Luckily enough, I work for an agency now where they, um, they're they totally cool with me running a full Molly setup and that's how I generally, I generally run. So obviously I did a review on this one. I kind of showed you, gave a walk around on this one about five, six months ago and some things that have drastically changed like that one. I've got some different internals in here from the ceramic. The first thing is the weight savings is huge. All right, I went, this thing, fully loaded with everything you see on it is just like right around 10 pounds, which is amazing. It still sounds like a lot, but compared to, you know, when you think of like AR 500 steel, ceramics, all that kind of stuff, the weight savings is insane. It's super comfortable to wear. Obviously, I'm not wearing a super like high end, like I mentioned earlier, like a Cry JPC or a First Spear or anything like that. This is just a regular old Condor XO Gen 2, just like it was before. Um, I can say having worn it now throughout an entire Midwest summer in the heat and humidity, it does tend to get a little bit warm at times, even with some of the mesh backing in it and the fact that I'm running much lighter plates and a lighter setup, it was still a little toasty, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm looking forward to trying something else um, here moving forward. Um, that being said, I'm just gonna give you a rundown on what's all in front, some of the considerations and some of the things that are different. Also with some of the loadout items that I have generally on me that aren't shown here or within an arm's reach especially now that we think about the whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing. So let's just kind of dig into this right here, okay? So first and foremost, um, a lot of people might say, you know, do you need um, this level of protection? And I will say emphatically, yes, because you never know what's going on. We live in a much more volatile, uh, fluid environment where we're having riots, protests, all kinds of things. Um, and then also you might have a situation where I find myself personally in a lot of different environments on any given day. Three days ago, I had a mass casualty incident on an interstate where I had hazardous chemicals down around me in addition to um, just physical threats. I also had, um, you know, a month, a few weeks, I was in a barn doing an innovation. So um, then I also had like a month ago, I had a, um, uh, GSW where somebody shot themselves with an AK-47 through their leg and the scene wasn't necessarily safe. So there's a lot of different things. I find myself operating in asymmetric environments. And I do say operating because I do have to be ready situationally for a whole lot of different stuff. And I have to be ready to go. And I go in there with that mindset of, I got to look out for myself, my partner, um, all the things that are going along, patients, and then the people that are in the periphery as well. So there's a lot of thought that goes into this whole thing. So in addition to the medicine, all right? So for me personally, I like the carrier aspect of it. It creates a workspace for me right in front. I know where everything's at. With that guy over there, I mentioned I kind of had to reach around sometimes, get my radio and all that kind of stuff. Not so with the case with this one. I can see, I can make sure that I'm focusing on what I need to focus on. I got everything right in front of me. I like a nice tight package. Like I mentioned, I'm in a lot of different operating environments. I never know where I'm going to be from one hour to the next. So I like running slick. I like having everything kind of contained with me. I don't have to worry about getting hung up. That MCI I was talking about. I was crawling through a car that had been crashed and it was one of those things where I was really thankful that I didn't have a bunch of stuff hanging off me on a, on a I call it a bat belt. Uh, just because of the perspective it allowed me to get in and not get hung up on stuff. I didn't have to worry about what I was getting caught on, if it was glass, if it was a jagged metal, all those kinds of things, okay? So it protects me from that perspective. The wrap around, you know, with the stab protection and the penetration protection, it's not always thinking about knives. Like I just mentioned, I could have jagged metal or glass that I just kind of back into. It affords me that protection, so it is a wraparound. Um, other things that I can tell you about it. Like I mentioned, it's just a regular old Condor Exo Gen 2. Um, 
but let me just give you a walk around, all right? So first and foremost, flashlight. You can see here in the original video, I've always been a surefire guy and um, I still am, but I've been rocking this Olight all summer long. I went through the summer, the nights, night shifts, all that kind of stuff with it. And I was a little suspect of it. The tactical cap on it, the instant on tends to stick at times. It still does, but it has two redeeming qualities why I love it as a duty light. One is the rechargeable capability. So you just have a USB charger. So I'm not always hunting for 123As. The second thing, it has this amazing five lumen moonlight that is fantastic for check and reactivity of pupil for any of you guys out there that might be in pre-hospital emergency medicine. So the five watt looks like this. It's perfect at night for checking reactivity. If I'm thinking about maybe somebody who might have some drugs on them, maybe they've been having a little too much alcohol, or if I think they might have a TBI or a stroke, I can use this and make sure that um, I'm not blasting their retinas out. So it's super nice. It's got modes all the way up. It does go all the way up to 1500 lumens. This is the uh, Olight Warrior, uh, M2R Warrior. I will say the throw of the light, when you think of it from a TIR lens, it's not as crisp, but it doesn't, I don't like to throw as much as a Surefire. I'll just say it's also a whiter light where I think the Surefire is a little bit more natural when you're looking at contrast and stuff like that. Um, but I've been rocking it. Also, the price point is right. All right. Actually, I'm going to leave it out so we can show you everything. Working around the carrier pen, I made a comedic video, kind of satirical on a 20-minute video on a tactical pen. I still use it. This is my pen that I use. It's my Hogue Tactical Pen. It's one-hand operation, which I'm a big fan of. Um, still working great. I put, I think, four cartridges through it in the last few months. Have not lost it. That's an important thing. So I'm still rocking that. Uh, over here on the outside, I've got my own North American Rescue Cat 7 tourniquet. That is my own personal use tourniquet, if so needed. It's also one of those things, too. I just got to come out and say right now, make sure that you uh, know what you're buying. You're not buying cheap Chinese knockoffs and that you're buying a legitimate tourniquet that's a North American Rescue. It's not worth the $10 you're going to save to buy a knockoff. All right? All right. Other things I have out here, obviously, I've got my name that I go by at work because that is important for people to be able to recognize me if they don't know my name. I've got my blood type, which is A positive, so you guys all know that now. We do live in the coronavirus world where we have to wear masks whether we believe in them or not. And I have a cool duty colored navy blue and black mask so that matches my setup so I can look all Cobra for those you G.I. Joe fans out there. You got to look cool, right? So I have navy blue. I lose these a lot. So you'll see here as I open up my little admin pack, which is a Voodoo Tactical. Again, nothing super high end. Um, it's going to have a N95 mask in it, which is the throwaway 3M. So make sure you get fit on these things. If you guys aren't familiar with it, you N95, you actually want to have a sucrose fit testing on it to make sure that you have the right size. But that is the right size for me, and I have a throwaway. And then while I'm kind of digging stuff out here, I'm going to show you. I've also got a full-blown 3M cartridge. Uh, these have got P100s and 100 masks. These are cartridge replaceable here for any environments that I might find myself in that require a little bit more protection than that, or I think I need a little bit more robust coverage. I've always got these somewhere close to me, not necessarily on me as a person anymore, um, but I do carry these with me at arm's length, just given the situation where we're at in the world. Other things I have in here, I have a pulse oximeter. This came from Amazon. It's like 25 bucks. It's super slick for those of you guys who are in emergency medicine. Not only does it give you your blood saturation or your oxygen saturation levels, it also shows you your pleth and your pulse rate, which is super cool. So you can just very quickly check on somebody that you might be thinking is presenting kind of COVID-y. Um, but it's also just a great tool to have. I know a lot of the PJs have been listening to PJ MedCast quite a bit, and they also recommend carrying your own little pulse ox with you putting these all over the place. They're great, um, especially in the environment that we're in right now. 25 bucks on Amazon. Multi-tool I keep up front. It is a Leatherman Wave Plus stainless steel. I don't carry it anywhere else. I don't put it in a holster or anything like that. I like it right in front of me. My right in the rain pad to go with my tactical pen. This is a regular right in the rain. I use it all the time. Since I do cardiology, I seem to always need to have a couple extra electrodes. I've got those in there for me. We have Life Pack 15s, and we also have the Lucases, all that kind of stuff. We have the latest and greatest toys where I work. So I always have a couple extra electrodes in there because I always seem to need one if one falls down or pops off because somebody's all sweaty, or as we call it, diaphoretic. Uh, and then it's not tactical unless it's snackical, so I always have some level of snack with me. It used to be either like an Airhead or some like Skittles or something, which are great for diabetics, but um, I'm doing the whole keto thing right now, trying to cut up again a little bit. So 
Unfortunately, no candy in here for me. I actually have a bison bar. This is a Epic bar. Um, I am not sponsored. I am not plugging these. I just think they taste pretty good. I get them at Kroger when they're on sale for like two for four bucks. It's a nice little thing to hold me over to make sure that I have a healthy snack to um, get me to that next meal. And then I also have an extra spare mask in here because as I said, I lose these things all over the place. And that basically covers everything in here. I usually probably also have a pair of gloves, a pair of backups, like actual nitrile gloves, not tactical gloves. And then I usually have an Oakley soft case so I can clean my uh, glasses off if need be. I just don't have those in here right now. All right. Other things I can tell you before I forget, I want to say I'm clearly labeled here as a paramedic because one of the concerns that people have with running a rig like this is that you can get confused for other agencies that might not have um, paramedic stuff in mind. I clearly say here that I'm a paramedic because I operate with those people on those in the same environments and uh, it makes it very easy. This one's just a, a regular old embroidered one. I am going to be doing a first spear one as the IR cell block one. I'm waiting on for those to come in, and I'm also going to be upgrading my radio pouch, which is a 511 to the first spear uh, patrol pouch as well. So that being said, I'm going to continue on the tour. I got my trauma shears, which are Leatherman Raptors. They're great for getting through. I think they are a fantastic shear. All the other tools on them, I have used the oxygen wrench at times. The seatbelt cutter, uh, I've used once, but more than anything, they're great trauma shares, and that's why I carry them. I have two other pens here as backups because you can never have too many pens, and I don't like people with bloody hands touching my cool pen, so that's what these are for. I attach the Voodoo Tactical Admin Pouch via Maxpedition uh, Tactize to the Molly. I did have a Maxpedition Admin Pouch. It was a little bit too big. Like I mentioned, I like like running slick. I think the Voodoo Tactical is a good size for that. Um, this may change. I'm looking for another option. Also, here in the front, I do have a fixed blade knife. This is a Chris Reeve uh, Professional Soldier, excuse me, that I always keep right here in front for me. I've used that on occasion as needed. Uh, comms. I'll talk about this. We use uh, Motorola Apex systems like a lot of public safety. It's 800, 900 megahertz, all band. GPS enabled. I put the short stubby antenna in it. I have two different antenna combos I can run based on where I think and how far out I might be running on any given day. Um, I usually have those in a backpack with me in the truck if I'm out um, so I can swap if I'm needed. Um, but this is encrypted. It's an all band. So since it is encrypted, we do send personal and we talk about personal information over the air that we might not want other people to know about it. So um, that being said, not only do I have my remote mic and speaker here, I opt to run an in-ear setup so that I can be even more discreet, especially because we're talking about personal information oftentimes over the air that we don't want broadcast all over the place. So that's my comm setup, very common for um, public safety. So that's really about it, if I think about it. Um, other thing I want to mention here, we're going to go on the internals of this thing. Again, this was custom cut, these panels for me, so it gives me wraparound protection. And I don't put anything else in the front pouch here because we'll get to that here in just a second. But the big thing for me is that I also usually have some other first aid items in there that might be considered like IFAC-ish. I don't run an IFAC on the outside. I actually keep it on the inside here for me to keep it a little slicker. So for me, I've got a pair of uh, chest seals and then I've got a clotting sponge, which is you know your typical quick clot stuff. The reason I run it on the inside is because I can easily get to it and just pull it down if I need to, it, but most importantly, it protects it from actually getting shot or stabbed where it's got a hole in it and then renders it useless. So that's super important. I guess the back side here, I can show you it also says paramedics. So when I'm on scene, people know who I am, what I'm, my capabilities are. And then here on the inside, this is going to be that Point Blank Enterprises Kevlar. This is custom cut for me. It took months for them to create this little thing, believe it or not. Uh, but this is super lightweight, level three uh, Kevlar. And then on the inside here, this is what's cool. I've got these both front and back. Is This is more Point Blank Enterprises. This is the Paraclete. I do have a trauma pad behind it. Not necessarily needed, but you can see here this one is a little bit thicker. It's also a little bit heavier. It's about 1.4 pounds. It's about 0.6 inches thick, about twice as thick as the other one. But this is their Omega ICW plate. So this is what you would consider um, special application um, in advanced threat. So when this one is uh, 
in worn in conjunction with the soft armor, it actually gives me an insane level of protection. So um, what kind of protection am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about all the way up to 762 by 51, also known as M80. So of course it'll stop M193s, it'll stop 855s. Um, it'll also stop AK rounds, which of course are your 752 by 39s. So this was basically an all around multi-hit rifle polyethylene setup that's extremely lightweight um, and does a fantastic job. Not, not, cheap um, for this setup. So it's not going to be your safe life defense setup. It's not going to be your AR-500, your Spartan armor systems, and nothing against those guys. I think safe life's got, a, there's a bunch of people doing a bunch of reviews out there that showed us being really good stuff. This is this kind of like that top tier stuff that I'm talking about where I went from the ceramics to the top of the line from um, Point Blank Enterprises. So that's where it is at. That basically concludes the tour of everything that I've got in here. So um, I don't know what else I can tell you about it. I want to kind of keep this video just a little bit short. Again, my intentions were to show you what the complete loadout looks like. I gave you, oh, I forgot one thing. So with COVID, obviously, I forgot one thing. I wanted to show you my stethoscope here, too, for those of you guys who kind of geek out on this kind of stuff. It is just, it's a Lippmann Cardiology 4 in kind of departmental colors, too, uh, navy blue and black. So that's really where it's at for this whole thing. I wanted to give you guys just a rundown on what the setup looks like in, at the end of summer, early fall, before we get into the winter months and before I transition this thing potentially to the new um, para tactical paramedic specific rig that I'm going to be um, evaluating for somebody out there. So that's really it for this one, guys. If you like this kind of stuff, give me feedback on it. I love some pure comments on how you guys are setting your stuff up. Um, leave me comments, feedback, all that kind of stuff. I enjoy it. I, look, I love reading the comments, that kind of stuff. I do it for the community. And with that being said, like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. Follow me again on Instagram at Medic. I'll put it here on the screen again. And that's really it. Until next time, guys, stay safe.